Hi, and welcome to this live reading from On Viking Seas, The Forerunner, Book 3, by J. Veloso Batista, and this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter 1, Wicked Intrigues. Boom! Thunder rattled the foundation, sifting dust from the crossbeams overhead. As the sea storm rolled onto the rugged coast of Laid, the sharp tang of lightning coalesced in the darkened long hall, static crackles snapped and sparked the air. Holian leaned closer to the casting bowl, gesturing for his women to join him. The three vulva gathered, hovering over the wide, flat vessel. Their heads huddled together, holding their breaths and squinting into the dark liquid. The water in the bowl pitched of its own volition, splattered the oaken table, and startled the owl tethered to its perch. It flapped its wings and screeched. Black swirls fused, and a dark shape began to form in the murky fluid. Wind rattled the shutters of the hull and moaned through the chinks in the, long wall, the log walls. Flickering firelight danced shadows about the smoky room, illuminating the arcane tattoos inked up the warlock's arms to circle his neck. In the shadowed corner of the long hall, a group of cowed slaves whimpered and clustered together. The visage of a dark elf appeared up through the bowl's rippling surface. Holyun, the dark veneer spoke, his voice a rumble of distant echoes. Dear niece, Holyun dipped his shaved head, the woman next to him cowering in submission. We delight to host your magnificence. What tidings have you? Svanhild the Fair, wife of Jarl Hammond, has fallen to our curse and the eldest daughter follows. Soon, only the youngest shall remain. And we shall take her too, the woman with the shocking white stripe of hair blurted, the others nodding in agreement. As you foretold, great wise veneer, Hammond grows weak, crazed and despondent as his women succumb to our hexes. Plump and round, the shortest witch clapped her hands together and grinned, peering down her hooked nose at the silhouette in the casting basin. He declared for Harold the tangle-haired, he who works to unite all of the kingdoms of the north against your wishes. Just as you predicted. He shall fall as you command. We follow your instructions carefully, we, your committed servants. We shall stop his rally to Harold's banner. It is as I have foreseen dear niece squinted from the bowl. We can forestall the union of these northern lands and confound those who would supplant Acer and Veneer in the hearts of men. Our gods shall triumph over the tree-pinned Roman invader. We support your rule as Loki trickster commands. The wanderer, all father, casts his wise blind eye elsewhere. The plump witch wrinkled her nose in a pinched smile. We are free to carry out all your plans. And the potency of your ci ci cider enchantments, Holian gestured to the scry water's surface. We stand awed by the skills of Vanaheim. Teach us, great veneer. Unkempt black hair hanging long and thick over her face, the third witch implored the image of the bull. We ache for more knowledge. Yes, the two other vulva whispered, leaning close to the undulated surface. The face in the bowl scowled up at the four bending over the table. When the youngest daughter dies and we claim her hug behind beyond Midgard, this local chieftain will collapse as I have foretold. And you, holy and son of Garm, shall inherit his lands and position. Your new place and those that rally to your aid will forestall Harold's advance as I have seen. Yet, the dark elf squinted as his minions crowded over him. An interloper has arisen. I divine a threat to our plans. What have you foreseen? What is this threat? How can we stop? Murmurs and complaints. Holian held out his arms to quiet his witches. Dear niece lifted a slender hand. Veneer prophecy remains unassailable when near to any event. Such predictions always hold true. But time and alternate plans can unravel the schemes foretold far in advance. The original path I set before you grows dim and evolves to something new. Behold. The veneer passed a hand over his face, rippling the mirrored surface that separated his realm from Midgard. The image in the bowl shifted and swirled. A viking snack appeared in the misty bolt vision bowl, a tall blonde warrior standing at its helm, the long boat plying rough waves under a wide white canvas. Surf purled from its bow. 
The crew gathered around its smiling captain, relaxed, leaning against the gunwales and drawing the tackle down to trap wind in the sail. There, the voice of the elf intoned. The blonde leader? Holian asked. That hulk of a man who stands beside him? The short-haired shield maiden that laughs at his side? Nay, look closer. See the white-haired one. The white? You, you mean the child? The plump witch questioned. The elf hissed. Yay, that white-haired thing, his voice growled from beyond the vision. No stripling is that, tis a cursed abom abomination. The foursome leaned close to the wavy image, trying to get a closer look at the boy, his white locks streaming in the sea breeze, a black raven perched on his shoulder. You must stop that thing from reaching your shore, the vision of the longship faded, replaced by the dark elf's grim face. I foresee that child disrupts our plans. You must stop it, or it will undo all that you have achieved. How? Polian wondered aloud. Give me your hand here through this gate. Polian sucked in his breath and looked around the table where his women expectantly watched him. Gritting his teeth, he held his breath and plunged his hand into the bowl. His arm disappeared into the shivering, sur shimmering surface, sinking up to his elbow. His forehead broke out into a sweat, his lips curling away from his clenched teeth, and an involuntary grunt of pain slipped from his throat. Slowly, Polian withdrew his arm. His skin tinged blue, his fingernails blackened by frostbite. In his fist, he gripped a bronze medallion with a strange rune impressed in its surface. The pendant sparkled with flakes of frost. Dear niece re reappeared in the rippling surface of the water. I gift to you a medal of power, Holian, an object of supremacy wielded by no other in Midgard. With my teaching, you can use this medallion to call and direct the Oscar Ray. The wild hunt? Holian muttered, awestruck, and lifted the article high above the table. His witches sucked in their breaths. Truly? Yea, the evil cohort that ride the winds of the realm between realms when not pressed to the yuletide drive of their one-eyed Aesir lord. With my training, you can summon the wild gangford and set them to hunt the Middle Kingdom. Across the heavens to fly at your bidding, you can set these spirits upon that profanity. Holian smiled at the bronze metal, licking his lips. His women drew nearer to gaze up at the arcane object. Meanwhile, with my Vanir powers, I shall treaty with the Jotun, the, who reminds who minds the Midgard seas, to cast these wayfarers far off their course. Together we shall maroon them and send the Oscar to stop these rovers before they upend our conquering plans. Ah, whispered the plump witch. Thank you, Lord Vanir. Aye, thanks for this boon, Holian grinned, admiring the medallion, turning it to reflect glimmers of firelight. Master, whispered the shaggy-haired woman, please give us your blessing. Plate our mutable shapes. Yes, bend us to your prized form so we may better serve you, the taller witch with the shock of white hair pleaded. Rind, you shall have your wish tonight. A crooked smile passed over the dark elf's face and favoring his shoulder, he raised his arms. He began to twist his long fingers and chant while Holian inched back from the table. From their darkened corner, thr the thralls groaned and huddled closer as the battering of winds increased outside. Shutters rattled in their casings. With small creaks, squeaks and ecstatic cries, the three women hunched and contorted, dropped to their knees and rolled to the floor, writhing. Their robes and long skirts collapsed. From the discarded clothing, three beasts emerged. Jet black and green-eyed, a shaggy troll cat leapt easily to the tabletop. A white striped badger nosed from beneath the pile of cloth and a great winged vulture, its neck and head a waddle of fat red flesh and its beak a savage yellow hook, shivered its feathers and clacked its bill. Holian stepped forward and allowed the badger to climb up his robes, clawing its way to the table, while the vulture hopped to the side of the vision bowl to stretch its wings as buzzards do. Holian struck the cat's thick fur, its back arching pleasantly under its hand. My vazen, the elf chuckled, call the spirits of the wild hunt, summon the Oskarai, destroy these Vikings and their pet, the white-haired child. <laughs>